Well, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. And welcome to the Back Catalog Listening Party. My name is Mother Banjo, one of your hosts. My name is Anthony Erig, the other host. And today we have joining us from Idaho, I do believe, Rita Hosky. Hi there. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday it, and we're we so excited. It. Yes, we made it. And uh, Connie joining us from Richfield. Hi, Connie. Hi, Connie. Um, Chris, uh, looking forward to today's show. Should be outside, but a little too breezy. Enjoying it. Uda Pills, Keller Pills. Yeah, it's a lovely day here in Minnesota, um, but it, it's still a little on the cool side. So I, I'm happy I'm inside as well. Uh, Joe joining us from Minneapolis. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Uh, David, um, looking forward to today's show while enjoying the big friendly, a green, uh, friendly A Grain Belt Premium. <laughs> mm, nice. And uh, Wiley joining us from Northern Virginia. Hi, Wiley. And Steve. Hey, Steve. Hi, everybody. We are happy to have you here, and uh, we are so excited because Rita Hosking is joining us. I've been a fan for quite a number of years, and uh, you are joining us today from Idaho, but you are actually based in Northern California, right? That's right. Yeah, I grew up in the far northeastern part of California, and but now I live down by Sacramento. Excellent. Well, we are glad that you are able uh, to join us from Idaho. We hear things are a bit stormy there. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully everything uh, lets allows you to enjoy the music and hang out with us. Um, for folks who are less familiar with you or your music, maybe you want to give us a little two minute origin story of uh, we know where you grew up, but like how you fell into making music and and in particular where this record fits into that. Uh, I started making music when I was a kid, really, I was uh, in my first band when I was age 13 or 14 with my sister and some other girls called the Farmer Etts. And it was like old time mountain music, which I didn't know what that was, the, the term, you know, when I was a kid, but that's what it was. And I realize now. And, um, and then when I was 20, my housemates and friends got together and bought me a guitar because I was always making up songs around the house about the dog or whatever. <laughs> They bought me a guitar. I learned three chords and I was writing songs. Boom. You that's know, all you need. So, <laughs> that's, it, that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. And it, when I sang, it came out very country. We, we listened to country music growing up and it sounded very country folk. So that's why I call it country folk music and uh, started making records in 2005. Cause I also went and got a teaching credential and had two kids uh, in 2005. I, took out my got my first record going and just kept doing one every other year and the one we're going to talk about today the 2015 record is uh is pretty unique because it was a concept record unlike the anything else i'd ever done before so yeah so the the previous records uh were just so songs inspired by life and, and and stories and such like that yeah yeah and uh you know th that's the same with any record right even if it's a concept record, but I just wanted to somehow do something different and um, kind of dive into it, a different way of framing everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that record we're going to talk about, Frankie and the No-Go Road, as you said, is a concept album. Tell us a little bit about why this concept, uh, well, what the concept is and yeah. uh, why, why you chose it. Well, I was on an airplane, maybe flying through Minneapolis or something. I don't know. <laughs> I was flying from show to show or whatever. And I was drawing on a doodle pad, you know, just like a, a notepad. And these drawings came out in a circle. And I thought, wow, to, to myself, I thought, wow, that looks like a hero's journey, you know, in a circle. And bang, that's it. That's my new concept. And, and so when I say hero's journey, uh, I mean, that series of steps that people have in common all over the world in their stories and myths and so on. And Joseph Campbell wrote a lot about it. And many other people have too. Um, a guy named Christopher, Christopher Vogler wrote an, a, a book called The Writer's Journey that narrowed it down to 12 steps. And that's what the high school curriculum teaches as well as a 12 step hero's journey. And I was like, well, that's the perfect number of songs for my new record. I'll do one song per step. And um, Anthony, you had mentioned that you had learned about the hero's journey in college, right? 
Yeah, yeah. I got. I was lucky enough to have a course where we got to read uh, Joseph Campbell's biography, and then that led me to another course about Carl Jung and his work. And yeah, it was yeah. very inspiring. Yeah. So I had I had inspiring professors, and I studied religion, like survey of world religions and anthropology and psychology type stuff too. And uh, I remember one time I was telling one of my professors a dream. He he had people tell their dreams uh, ahead of class. And then he would draw the dream out on the board, this wonderful man from China named Hui Lin Lai. And, uh, and then he would analyze the dream using psychology and religion and so on, and just kind of move through it with all these different types of symbolism. And at one point he pointed to me and he said, next our hero does this you know, on the chalkboard. And I raised my hand. I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, Doctor Lai! I'm I was not a hero in that dream. You know, I didn't feel heroic at all." And his chalk went up in his hand, and he flew around and faced me, and he shook it in my face, and he said, "Rita, we are all on our own hero's journey all the time." Mm. And I was like, ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> and "That stuck with me, you know." Uh, and I did a lot of reading like you and, and was very inspired by that. And another professor who wrote a book called Columbus and Other Cannibals. And he wrote about this disease called, or this monster also in Northern Plains Indians culture called Wetiko. And uh, I wanted to use that as my villain in, or my uh, you know, antagonist in the story. We uh, we have a picture here, I believe, from maybe your CD release party. Would this be an appropriate time to, to show Wetico? Sure. All right. So people can have a sense yeah. of what this is going on. So for those of you who are just listening, we're looking at a pretty amazing picture of someone wearing, it looks like maybe a paper mache mask. Is that correct? Yeah. So this album, unlike any others, I just kind of went crazy wild into all the artistic parts of it I could. I animated videos. I made these paper mache masks for the characters in the storyline. So that's me running around with this Wetico mask on. Wow. Uh, and it's made out of paper mache. And I've got a, a mask for Frankie, the blue mask. That's our hero. Frankie is our hero. And uh, anyway, they would come out during the CD release shows and I would get audience members to wear them besides just me. I did, I did it once usually, but the other time. So that's, those are pictures of the process of making it. Yeah. Uh, at other times I had audience members do it, which was so cool because the CD release shows were these really transformative transporting experiences for everyone. That's what people tell me. And I know they were for me too. And uh, I was just so thrilled to go through this journey with everybody. And so for instance, uh, in one of the songs, someone's paddling a canoe and they're being pursued by Wetico. So I had Frank, the, someone wear a Frankie mask and I'd find people ahead of the show. I'd be like, hey, you wanna do something fun? You know, come back doing this and, and I'll tell you what to do and you do this. And so they would just come floating out in their Frankie mask acting like they were paddling a canoe around the room. <laughs> cool. And then Wetico would come out with these rattles and things, another person, and kind of pursue them in wow. a not too aggressive way, but a sneaky way. <laughs> and they were moving it, yeah. you know, all around the room. Meanwhile, the band and I are playing the song and it was so fun, was so cool. All right, wow. well, I think I think we need to hear this, this tune, Wetico. We just saw those amazing pictures of the character what can you tell us about the character or this song? Yeah, well, this song, so uh, so in the journey, you know, you introduce the main character. And so we're gonna kind of go through these, we're, we've got five songs out of 12. So we're gonna skip around a bit in the journey. But the second step in the journey is where you kind of learn about what your nemesis is or what you're up against, right? Mm -hmm. And so for this journey, it was Wetico. And Wetico, uh, like I was saying, according to, uh, Legends of Northern Plains Tribes was this monster that lurked in the forest and was very pale and, and huge, kind of a giant with a big mouth and teeth. And and uh, they were cannibalistic, uh, meaning they had been humans before, maybe, and then became this because the tribe uh, kind of um, sent them away because they were too selfish and never really uh, became a loving part of the tribe. 
And so they would become let it goes and they'd become these, you know, crazed monsters. And they'd say, don't go in that forest because there's a let it go in there or something, you know, like watch out. But it was also this sickness. It had double meanings. It was something that someone could get afflicted with. And it meant that they were so self-serving and, and um, uh, sort of narcissistic and uh, greedy and insatiable that uh, they were, in a sense, cannibalizing, you know. And uh, so. That's what it's called. All right. Well, let's give it a listen. This is Rita Hosking with Wetico here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. of the soul But I got me a potion that'll make you whole Take it all Take it now Take it any way you can And you will be a royal when there's guns and dolls and man Call your mother Call your mother Suckers in distress But I'll eat you up Just like the rest You can't see me I slide in the in-between And you best impress me Cause there is no vaccine no. Call you mother Didn't want to talk over that last banjo bit. R no. Rita Hosking <laughs> with Wetico from her 2015 album, Frankie and the No-Go Road, which we are revisiting today with Rita, joining us live from uh, where she is right now in Idaho. And uh, yeah, totally. Of course, you you are uh, on a show with two banjo players <laughs> and uh, we're pretty we're we were doing some serious headbanging to that. That, yeah. that yeah. banjo and, 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 and if I'm not mistaken, that was two banjos. That, that was two banjos. Yeah. So that's that's really our, our speed. <laughs> um, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about the, um, the who's playing with you? On this, yeah. On this album? So uh, 
this record, let's see, I made one, two, three. This was the fourth record I made with Rich Brotherton mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. And uh, Rich is just this, you know, musical genius. And uh, he he's, most people have seen him as Robert O'Keefe's guitar player for decades. And he was band leader and, uh, and he also produces and does records in his studio in Austin, Ace, Ace Recording, it's called. Mm. And he's just this brilliant, really wonderful guy. And um, so when I brought this project to him, I was like, okay, we, this is a pretty eccentric thing, Rich. Like, this isn't like the other stuff we've done. And he's like, well, let's, let's think about what we could do. And so we, uh, we use the same bass player we've used we use for the other ones, Glenn Fukunaga, who's just this mm -hmm. fabulous upright bass player. And you probably heard him on lots of records. Like he's like a very in-demand Austin session player. Eliza and, Gilkison uh, and folks like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And he's fabulous. And he just, he, he just blended in really easily. Cause one of the things is um, I was, I am a brand new banjo player and I was super brand new when we did this and, you know, that was part of the magic of, um, you know, when you start to play a new instrument, all these new stuff comes into your head. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we didn't use a click and you'll hear that on a lot of the banjo tunes. I'm just playing them live because I was like, there's no way I could play with a click. Forget about it. You know, <laughs> I'm just like, forget about it. And so they just like ease right in beautifully. And uh, and then the drummer was a guy that Rich had never worked with and neither had I. But we were like. He, he said, I really have a feeling like he's really eclectic and he'd be into this and we should just take a chance. And so we did. His name's Donnie Wynn. And Donnie was Robert Palmer, Palmer sorry, Robert Palmer's drummer oh, for wow. a really long oh, wow. time. Like since he was a teenager, he picked him like Robert Palmer found him at some high school show or something. <laughs> and and uh, he's this really wild dude, fabulous. And so that with that rhythm section, before every song we, we recorded the songs in order of the hero's journey i was like this is like our journey too you know like we're all on this yeah. journey we're gonna do it together and it was so fabulous and so like before every song i talk about what the step meant in the journey and what kind of feel i wanted so for that song i was like okay this is introducing this character where go and like imagine like this really flamboyant nasty pimp like walking around and <laughs> flinging stuff around and talking about how awesome he is. And, you know, like I was like strutting around, like doing this and that. And, and, and they were like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And they, and then Donnie would like disappear and do a little this outside and <laughs> sure. come back in. And then he'd be like, all right, man, I'm ready. Symbols, man. That's it. It's symbols. I'm like, all right. Cause he's like, he went, he wanted something flashy sounding. So I was like expecting more different percussive stuff that he'd throw in, but he was like, no, it's all symbols. That's what this dude is. Whoa. And he was right. He was like, oh, that is right. I love it. So your, your description of these songs was influencing the arrangements. Oh, totally. Yeah. That's and super cool. We were going through it together. They were like, this is intense. You know, <laughs> like, we're all, it's really intense. That's awesome. Well, it did have that kind of like the groove on that, like having looked at those pictures of uh, the Wetico character um, kind of creeping around, like that groove kind of, um, I can almost yeah, see this, this character yeah. lurk, lurking around. So was that yeah. kind of stuff also influenced by by, you know, just the way you described it? Did you kind of let the band interpret that how they wanted? Yeah, yeah, That's I it. definitely, because, you know, when you have brilliant people playing and, and then uh, Rich played the banjo part and we added that after we did all you know, the other parts, the, the rhythm together, uh, he, we were, we were like, well, how can we make it sound different? And I, I can't remember what he did. You guys might understand, but I don't know if he, he like, played it backwards or like he's one of those people he'd be just like well let's just turn it over and see what happens and play it this way and, and i'm like ah. and, and, and well, it sounds incredible he did something we should i wish i could ask him right now uh what he did but it turned out so cool uh, really and uh, he wanted to edit out parts of it during that last third and i was like no keep it all in keep it all in because it's amazing well i love the kind of contrast of it sounded like you were probably doing the claw hammer stuff um, yeah, I'm just he, doing the basic picking, riff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's picking the stuff yeah. over there, and this is the contrast like, of those two. <laughs> yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting you said the thing about the timing because I, I, 
I actually thought that was such a cool part of it. Like there's one moment where the, where the, the time kind of changes up or there's a break and then the, yeah. but the symbols are, but the symbols are right in there. And it, yeah. <laughs> it I, I like, it, it felt so perfect for the song and maybe, maybe it was, maybe that was a happy accident or maybe that was intended, but either way it, it doesn't matter. Cause it, it just, it felt so perfect for the song that it would yeah. slink, that would start and stop and, Creep yeah, there was the sneaking, yeah, ducking in and out of shadows and showing up, and you know, like it's described there a little bit of the song. Like I, I slide in the in between. is what it says, you know. Mm. Like yeah. you, you can't always detect me. I'm there, though. You know, that's kind of a cool idea. Well, well speaking of the instrumentation, our friend uh, Chris Jetner had a question and was curious what your primary instrument was. Is that guitar from back when, or what? What, what would you uh, consider? What's your... that primary instrument? Or no? Oh, 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 I see. Maybe that's his question. Um, yeah, maybe that's what he was asking. Uh, yeah, it was a banjo. So I wonder if he was asking, um, he's a banjo player, so I bet you he recognized the instrument. So I'm wondering if he was asking, like, how the song evolved. Like, did it start there? Was that, the like, where the, the, the yeah. genesis of the song was you picking up yeah. this new instrument and yeah. discovering that? A number of the songs, a couple more, if we have time to hear today, were like that, where I was just figuring out how to make noise on a banjo. I mean, I was borrowing my daughter. That's my daughter's borrowed banjo on that recording because I still hadn't <laughs> even bought one for myself. And uh, and I didn't know how to play. And she had shown me how to play in double C. And I was like, great. You know, it's kind of like three chords. Okay, I'm off. Now I'm going to go write some songs. And she's like, well, okay. So I'm just making up all this weird stuff. And uh, and that's how, And but it was perfect for me because I, I was really looking for something that could tweak my brain differently to put me in a different space and get me out of what I had been doing. Well, that, and it, Oh, go ahead. Oh, and it especially feels appropriate given that you, these are, you know, that these are all character driven songs. So it's like, you kind of have to get into it outside of your regular headspace to get inside the character of Wetico or, or, uh, or Frankie or any of these, these people so that you can kind of step inside and sometimes just like putting on a costume, putting on a new instrument uh, can mm -hmm. maybe do that for you kind of transform yeah. yourself a little bit yeah so actually to segue into the next song um regarding instruments uh the other new instrument i used was a four string guitar that was tuned like a dulcimer oh wow um so a friend of mine who's a luthier i created this little thing for me out of a old beat up toy guitar kind of thing and uh and i, I call it a dulcitar because it's like a dulcimer but you know <laughs> Do you and play it so with a feather like, or do you play it with your fingers? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I played it, I think, with the soft pick or my fingers, something like that. But uh, I played it on a couple songs, and that created a different feel, too. And so the next song, uh, we're going to skip ahead. So then, so after you introduce Wet It Go, there was another song about, you know, maybe I don't want to take this journey anyway. Like, I think I might just run away, you know, like mm -hmm. thinking about just deserting the whole thing like not engaging this and that's called magic carpet i just kind of talked about oh maybe i should just like go to the desert and be a poet and not do this not worry about where to go and just try to run away and then there's more songs having to do with what happens after that so uh you gather t tools and teachers you know once you commit to a journey you start to figure out how you're going to get there so you need some maps you, and you need some teachers and such and tools that's power moving in and then there are songs about tests and this is one of the songs about tests and it's called the no-go road and uh just some people might wonder like well, why did you name it that so i'm asking a question before it's asked so i'm gonna ask myself this question <laughs> uh why did you name it that rita oh the no-go road is uh it's this place that I had in my imagination because uh, my babysitter, our babysitter growing up, one of them was a lovely woman who was um, a, a Native American who lived just up the road, down the road. And she had a dog named Nogo. And and I was like, one day I was just, what's why is Nogo named Nogo? And she's like, oh, because one time I was at this, uh, protest over at Four Corners against the GO road, the GO road, which was like a government road that was going to run through some sacred sites. 
and uh, everyone was chanting, no go, like because it, they called it the go road, no go, no go, no go, and had signs saying no go. And she said, me and my friend, we were the last ones there. And then this little puppy walked in hmm. and nobody claimed him. So I took him home and I named him no go. <laughs> I always thought it meant she just meant stay home, don't run. You know, mountain dogs would just take off, you know. Mm -hmm. But she's like, no, that's what that's what the name is. Um, but I had thought also of it as being like someplace you shouldn't go. Then later I thought, well, it, and that's what it was. They were saying, don't go down there. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> don't let the road go there. And I thought, well, the no go road is also like maybe a, a name for a metaphor for a place that we need to go, but we don't want to. And um, it's a scary place and it's full of a lot of uncertainties and it can be going inside or it could be going someplace external. And uh, anyway, that helps set up the next song. Is that like the cave? Yeah. In the Campbell. Yeah, uh, right. yeah, awesome. All right, well, let's give it a listen. Um, this is Rita Hosking with the No Go Road here on the Back Catalog Listening Party.
Rita Hosking with the No Go Road here on the Back Catalog Listening Party from her 2015 album, Frankie and the No Go Road. Rita Hosking joining us today on the show. And if you are joining us as well, uh, then tell us where you're tuned in from. And um, if you're enjoying a snack or beverage, um, I failed to say that I'm enjoying a California white wine in honor of Rita, uh, even though she's in Idaho right now, she's from uh, Northern <laughs> California. Although I, I, I must confess, it's not one of your finer um, uh, vintners. Uh, this is just from a box. So, <laughs> but uh, it's what was what, what could be had right here on this Friday afternoon. But tell us what you are enjoying out there. And if you have questions for Rita, and speaking of which, it looks like Connie wanted to know about the cover art um, for this record, uh, which we were looking at when we were listening to the tunes. And uh, for folks who are just listening to this episode, you'll be able to see the artwork when you go to the show notes at backcataloglisteningparty.com. Um, and of course, there's images. I see um, Wetico on there, uh, the white mask, I'm assuming, that we saw earlier in the photos from your um, album release show, uh, the big puppet mask. But what are what are the other characters? And it looks like you have, what, uh, six of the step, 12 steps of the journey? Something like that. Yeah, I guess so. So this is what I drew on the airplane that I was talking about that made me think of a hero's journey, although I drew it a little better the second time. And <laughs> gorgeous. Um, it's very much influenced by the Woodlands style of Indi Woodlands Indian style of art, which is uh, which is really started by a painter by the name of Norval Morisot, who was an Anishinaabe artist and um, who painted absolutely brilliant, brilliant sort of shamanistic paintings uh, that really shared a lot of uh, the culture with people. In fact, it even kind of alarmed some people at first. They say, oh, you're sharing way too much, you know, but um, he loved color and his, his, a lot of his figures were similar to this. And I've loved his work for so long and it really made a sense, made sense to me in this project. So yeah, so we have Wetico, there's the mask, and um, uh, you see someone in a canoe. We're going to hear a little bit about a canoe later, a spirit canoe, and those are their spirit helpers going around. And there's just kind of a little bit of a, a journey going on, like an evolution or a journey, a hero's journey going on here, where uh, uh, you see there's a fish inside the bird, and there's a mm. bird inside the coyote. Uh. And it kind of keeps going. Um, and then you hit wet it go. And then, oh, my gosh, you are got to get the heck out of there with your spirit <laughs> guides. And then you're kind of back into the cycle again and going around again. So uh, the, there are a lot of other illustrations I made. On the back of it, I had this uh, figure with antlers that's uh, kind of also the uh, a hero figure that people really like, too. Nice. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there's no longer physical copies of this, but um, the digital downloads, I would assume, have this cover art that people could uh, print yeah. up and uh, and enjoy. Yeah. Can you can it, you tell us a little bit about uh, what people could get if they if they were to download this this record? Yeah, so that they would get the cover art. There was a booklet, um, and so you would see all the stuff. There's more more illustrations that are are really nice on the inside and. Uh, on the back and then liner notes that have also what I call headlines and the headlines say uh, what's happening next in the song in the song like could it clues the person into what's going on in the hero's journey so in fact maybe I could give you the headline for the next song I think it's mama said is the next mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. so the next one is on the topic of a reward so you go through these big tests these big conflict and you get through it and you come out the other side and in a lot of myths you get some kind of reward and maybe it's a golden ring or maybe it's a kingdom or maybe you just learn something and in my case I wanted Frankie to just learn something and uh, so they thought Frankie thought back to things that they had learned from their parents or books or special people and found that those were the kinds of things that they were now understanding finally the meaning of which they hadn't understood before. And so the, the headline for this above the liner, the lyrics in the liner notes reads, hero confronts villain, see self. <laughs> so you wrote them like headlines in a newspaper. Yeah. So that's yeah, above that. each. 
song lyric. That's amazing. Well, before we listen to that, I just I do want to let people know that you can get all of those headlines and the liner notes and the lyrics and the cover art and the high res digital files. This is a, a really amazing sounding record. I mean, we say I feel like we always say that, but this really sounds great. I mean, the production value is so high. And if you appreciate what you're hearing over the internet, imagine how good it will sound if you have the high wet res wave files or flat files. Um, so I'll encourage everybody to go to RitaHosking.com where you can pick up this album as well as some other other records as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And re- listen to the whole thing at once if you can. Like have your own private listening party. Go through the journey. Excellent. All right. Well, before we listen to this one, can you give us the headline one more time right before we listen to it? To yeah. So this is up? Mama said it's about the reward after the big conflict with the villain. And the headline is Hero confronts villain. See self. Rita Hosking. Mama said here on the back catalog listening party. <laughs> Mama said, Rita Hosking from her 2015 album, Frankie and the No Go Road. Uh, Barking Dog Music uh, said, I have the old school physical thing CD. Very nice. And I have to say, I just found mine on the shelf behind me. Um, And uh, it is amazing. It has, uh, as she said, a whole booklet of stuff. So if you ever find, stumble upon a copy, because they're out of print right now. So if you find one snag it while you can uh you can't have mine but you can uh (laughs) snag someone else's and um uh but again you can get those downloads uh with with all the the goodies uh 
at uh, FaridaHosking.com. And I love the movement on that song. Like when you, I mean, the rhythm section so tight with the bass and the sparse drums. And then mm-hmm. when the yeah. strings come in, it's just like, uh, uh, so is cool. that a bowed bass? So, listening to? um, no, that was actually, that was the one sampling that we used. It's a cello sample on oh, the, the strings. Wow. Okay. It, it sounded like, like it was live in the studio. That's amazing. Yeah, no, that was one thing we were like, uh, let's, <laughs> Rich was like, I could do this. I could do this. <laughs> it, was so, it was so but, theatrical with the, yeah. the that, that space that, that you were referring yeah. to, Ellen, just that, I mean, to wait for that snare drum hit i mean like it really was felt like we were moving along and so you mentioned not recording to a click were most of the instruments played together at one time then like or was it just Uh, the rhythm section on most songs but on that song i i did play i played my banjo part first saying and without a click and i was like you know what i don't think we should bother trying to make anybody play on this (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what they're going to do. You know, like, like I was just like, how could they, like, what do they do with this? And they were both like, no, no, let us try. Let us try. Let us try. And so Glenn Fukunaga on bass just slipped in these beautiful notes. And I don't know if you heard at the beginning, he did this like little thing mm-hmm. at the, at the top. And, and then Donnie Wynn, the drummer, I was just like, dude, I think you better just like pull out a shaker or something and like give up on the kit. And he was like, Nah. <laughs> you know? Then he went out and did this some yeah, more. And he's like, oh, like, tell me more about this, man. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then he just ripped that out. And I was just floored. I mean, my, my jaw has literally, literally dropped. I had no idea that part existed anywhere in the universe that he played. Yeah, it was really amazing yeah. because he was really reacting to the story. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was yeah. he was really helping it kind of along, you know, and, and uh, you know, not not the other way around where you're playing to the drummer. He's playing, he was yeah. playing to, to you and which is, which is great. fantastic. Cool. He's a, one of the, one of the reasons I had learned about him and got excited too, is as he had done some stuff with Sam Amadon. Mm. And um, like you, if you've listened to Sam, you kind of understand like, yeah, that's pretty, can be pretty eclectic, cool stuff. And yeah. Mm. Well, it's so interesting that Tony mentioned the theatrical aspects because I was thinking the same thing when I heard this. I'm like, oh, this could be like a movie or a a theater show. And and obviously when you stage it, as you were talking about at the top of the show, uh, you had, you know, some you had some mass and some, you know, a little bit of performance art and some theatrical stuff happening. But have you ever thought about staging it as a as a show or as a play? Absolutely. I fantasized about making it into a musical. And I might still someday. I mean, still people who love the album say, are you going to make that in a musical? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Your next grant project, out, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if I could figure out a way to do it, maybe I'll get a grant from some psycho- psychology foundation or something, or I That's don't know right. what. Yeah. But I would love to do that, yeah. And I'm well, already thinking of what else I could write. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I know that you are very busy because, uh, you know, speaking of grant-funded projects, you actually – just put out a new record called Climate Country Radio, uh, which was supported by a grant. Uh, tell us a little bit about the concept behind your new record uh, so that folks can know about that. Yeah, it's a, uh, I heard of this it's a state grant where they were uh, looking for artists to help further messages that the state were trying to get across that have to do with climate change, adaptation and mitigation, among other things. And I was looking for something that I could do to help in the climate struggle, you know, to help mitigate things. And um, as a songwriter, I wasn't quite sure what that would be. But when I saw that, I said, okay, I think I can try to propose something here. So they're short info tunes, kind of resembling Schoolhouse Rock, if you ever remember <laughs> yes. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but but in country style. And they have to do with emergency preparedness and, you know, like bad air days or uh, energy conservation. I have a song all about our value and insulation. Um, things like that nice. and they're su- super fun to make and they're short and um, they're geared toward radio so uh, the grant covers northern california so that's where i've been hitting radio and uh, i'd love for it to spread out beyond that but i might it might have to wait till i get the grant period is over um this summer but in the meanwhile it's available for download for free from my website and from Bandcamp. Awesome. You can head on over to RitaHosking.com to pick up your free copy. And while you're there, you should definitely grab a copy of uh, the wonderful record we're listening to today. Thanks. Yes. Uh, 
and Frankie and the no go road. And um, uh, yeah, I love how that like the range of topics you cover in all of your, your catalog is so wonderful from, you know, like personal stuff to uh, obviously the record we're talking about today, Frankie and the no go road, which is more of a, um, a little more philosophical and literary journey, you know, of a character um, uh, going through the American uh, or, or sorry, the, the hero journey, I should say, um, but as sort of an American context. Um, and then this climate country radio, which is very much, you know, relevant and timely and uh, message driven. Um, so yeah. Do you have daydreams about beyond staging the Frankie and the no-go road theater show of, of what will be next on the horizon? Are you working on anything new right now? Uh, I think I might try to do a volume two of climate country radio. Cause there's so many other topics I could have covered. People are saying, why did you do one on heat? Why didn't you do one on this and that? <laughs> so, uh, I might continue to do that. Uh, I definitely want to celebrate this album next year. It'll be 10 years old and I want to do something special to celebrate it. So maybe I'll put together another release show or I was so enveloped great. in what I was doing. I didn't think to get anyone to video one. I should have, mm. but I was just like, Phew. Well, you yes. could take it on the road Thanks. and uh, we could all enjoy seeing the staged version yeah. of this. That would be really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to point out, um, Joni had a, an interesting question. Um, she just asked, what at what point in your life did you know that this was your calling, that this art was your specific passion? Oh, probably not till I was like 35. I knew that I liked doing it, but um, I actually had a dream. If you know of Utah Phillips, oh, yeah. uh, that... So uh, I knew him a little bit and he lived up in an area not far from me. And I had a dream that I went to his house with my kids and um, his wife, Joanna, like opened the door and said, come in. But then she's like, but we're going to the river to swim. And Utah's already got, got the car out back. And I was like, oh, and, she, and he pulled around. And he says, are you coming? And I was like, oh, but. I didn't bring swimsuits for the kids and I didn't bring this and I didn't bring towels. Oh, I better go get, and he, and he was like, get in or, you know, like, or, oh. or forget about it. This is all the dream. And I was like, uh, so I like grabbed my kids and dove into the back of the car. And then the metaphor dawned on me in the dream, like, oh, this is about, he's saying like, get, you know, get with it. You're a songwriter, get on the road, get doing your thing. You like, might not be ready, but you got to go anyway. Right, just go. Yeah. But I was like, but I've got my kids and I've got all this and I've got, and he was just like, ah, just jump in the car. <laughs> so that was wow. Was That's yes. amazing. That's super cool. Well, while we're talking about this kind of the dreams and, and, the, and the, the hero's journey and those things like that, was there any point in the making of this record where it mirrored the, any of those steps for you? Is there a point where you didn't want to crush the threshold mm. or return or was there any, any kind of parallels with that or was it um, pretty smooth sailing for, for putting this record together? Oh, uh, it went, it went pretty smoothly. I was super excited about it. I started not at the beginning though. However, I started writing it from the Supreme ordeal step. There's a song called black hole. That was the first song I wrote. I felt like I was just at a bottom. Like I think, the record was a therapy thing for me too because i was feeling really low and i needed a way out and i sort of started at the bottom pit and worked my way out and then circled back around and uh and by that point i was just you know buzzing with life so well maybe great. then you're the guide which is a, a central character in, in all of these stories <laughs> yeah. who, who help yeah. uh, who help others um yeah uh, you're certainly doing that today yeah, for sure. And uh, speaking of of helping others, uh, we want to thank those that have helped uh, that catalog listening party on our journey uh, from when we started during the pandemic uh, till now, uh, over 200 episodes later. Um, we're going to get to a couple more songs, but I do want to make sure to thank these folks that support the show and make it happen every week. That want to thank Penny, Anna, Linda, Bevan, Connie, Vaughn, Ellen, Chris, Alex, Becky, Peggy, Joe, Jim, Beverly, John, Fred, Tim, Sarah, David, Dustin, Matt, Steve, Mark. Homestead Pick and Parlor, Severin, Lynn, Mary, Many Tracks, Nikki, Joni, David, CJ, Wiley, Stephanie, Christy, Diane, and our newest Patreon member, Hetty, who uh, just Welcome, joined us. Um, and if you want to support the show and get invited to special after parties, get first look at all the guests, and get other inside news, um, you can uh, join us at patreon.com slash back catalog listening party. And we want to have a special shout out to Joe, who's uh, joining us live today, who also we heard from Rita ahead of the show that he like bought the album we're talking about today 
uh, before he even heard the episode. He just was like, I'm going to get this record right now. <laughs> now that's dedication, Joe. We appreciate you. And uh, and we appreciate all of you for yeah supporting the artists, not just supporting the show. But Yeah, uh, it goes a long way. And so once again, we're going to put a plug in for heading over to RitaHosking.com and uh, support Rita. Let her know how much you appreciate what she's doing and help her make that next uh, Climate uh, Radio uh, album. That's right. And uh, we see Hugh joined us from Albany, California. Lots of folks uh, joining the chat. If you have any questions for Rita, make sure to get them in. We only have about 10 minutes left. So uh, throw them in the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, But right now we want to get in our last two songs if we can. Uh, The next one is Spirit Canoe. Uh, Is there anything you want to say about this song? Uh, The heroes getting the heck out of the, the den of the villain. They're like, this is the escape scene. This is like E.T. on the bike, you know, the kid. <laughs> I actually yeah. have the headline here. It's, with new knowledge, Frankie makes jeopardous trip back. Yeah. Rita Hosking. And it's a crazy drum scene again. In, I think I wrote this in seven. Ooh. Not, all right. I didn't know what that was, but <laughs> I did. You can count, guys. And the Save drummer. Some. And Donnie Wynn, again, which just like blew us away. All right. Let's give it a listen. Rita Hosking, Spirit Canoe here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Another banjo headbanger for us. That yeah. was Spirit Canoe, Rita Hosking here on the back catalog listening party from her 2015 album, Frankie and the No-Go Road, which we are revisiting today. And much like the earlier track where we were talking about how the the strings and the, had some movement to it, this had a totally different kind of movement. It definitely felt like you were on like a river, rushing river. Yeah, or you could feel rapids. the rapids. Yeah. So yeah. that's where I said I'd have audience members, you know, canoeing around and the masks and the, and the wet, it, wet it go coming around and surprising them. And wow. really cool. I love it. So, and 
and did like you mentioned it kind of came out in these in different time signature was this also related to this kind of new instrument that you're just oh learning? yeah absolutely frenetic weirdness i'm just like uh i love yeah. that i, love I mean that. i wanted something kind of panicky sounding but at the <laughs> same time like like with a rhythm you know yeah yeah and and the juxtaposition too with those beautiful vocals. Um, it, was that your was that your daughter singing with you? On yeah, that? that's that's my daughter Cora singing singing harmonies on. Who, that. by the way, is a great singer songwriter in her own right. So if uh, folks should uh, check her out as well. But yeah, such a and uh, sort of a family affair. You have you have some family members uh, participating yeah. in this record. That's yeah, cool. my husband plays on all my records and plays with me all the time. He plays dobro, I think, mostly on this one. And uh, and Cora sings and uh, yes. there are times in the songs you'll hear echoes of other songs. And that last song we heard, there was an interlude that it was recalling a song called Power Moving In. So the hero was recalling tools that they need and that ways that they could get out of the situation from that mm. song, you know. Oh, so there's well, a kind lot of, like, of uh, references. Like the, picture, like the picture of the animal inside another animal, a song yeah. inside a song. So yeah, the idea of absorbing things as you go uh, right so if you hear the whole album a couple of times you'll pick that up after this really has to be a has to be a play or a, a theatrical <laughs> yeah production it, i know the recurring themes and yeah all that stuff um well although i have to say there's a lot more songs in this than your average andrew lloyd weber which has like three songs <laughs> just repeated over and over yours has like 12 distinct songs so um <laughs> Uh, again, if you like what you hear and folks are digging it, uh, get the whole album, listen to it from start to finish. Uh, mm -hmm. You won't be sorry. Go to RitaHosking.com. You can pick up this album. You can uh, pick up her new album for free, Climate Country Radio, and all of her recordings are so fantastic. So check them out. Check out where she's playing. And uh, and if you like what you hear, you can also throw something in our in her tip jar. We've uh, posted that link as well. Um, basically, just support Rita so we can see yeah. the stage version of the show or a touring version of it, uh, it for its 10th anniversary because we would love that. Yeah, and, and hopefully this can be a part of your promotion. You can reshare this so people who uh, um, are watching live now, you can share this with your friends uh, later. It'll be archived at the same URL on YouTube. Thank That's you, right. Mother Banjo and Anthony. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, we, such a treat. And we're going to yeah. get to this last song here uh, before we go. Uh, but I do want to mention that uh, if you like it, like it on YouTube and direct all the bots uh, to Rita Hosking. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do do this every week. Uh, I can't say the albums are always uh, this uh, involved as this one, Rita. This is like yeah. a, a really special uh, treat to talk about uh, the meat of this project. There's so much going on in it. Um, but we do do this every Friday. You can get alerts as to uh, who our next uh, guest will be next week. Um, but we'll dive into this last tune, which you made a uh, special note of when we were talking about, when you were picking the songs for this show today, uh, you said, we have to get to resurrection uh, because you're right. That's the way that the tale has to end in resurrection. It can't end in death. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, why you wanted to end with this. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the second to last step. And it's just uh, the hero has to return to the normal world, you know, through that after their journey. And uh, I, f I hit a bit of a wall there because I felt so frustrated with how, um, the world doesn't learn lessons. Our hero learns these lessons and the world is very bad at learning lessons. And uh, so this is addressing that a little bit. And there's a video you could look out on YouTube that I animated for this, it's kind of fun. Mm. Awesome, and we'll uh, we'll be putting links to her videos and to all these links we've mentioned on our website, backcataloglisteningparty.com slash 205. But now we're gonna close out our hour uh, with Rita Hosking's Resurrection here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. shot at the candle and also the flame if death and birth were equal maybe there'd be no
Rita Hosking, closing things out today on Back Catalog Listening Party with Resurrection from her 2015 album, Frankie and the No-Go Road. Uh, you all have to go to RitaHosking.com and listen to this whole record in sequence because it's really an amazing story. And Lynn says, melodic, heartfelt song to bring it all home. Stellar ending leaves us with hope in this frustrating world. Thank you. And Amen. yes, I want to uh, echo that. Uh, Rita, this has been such a special hour and we wish we had more time to Sticking to all of the hero's journey, but this has been so great. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you all for joining us today. This has been uh, an amazing hour. It went by way too fast. Um, so um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get a chance to, uh, to chat with you again in the future um, with another project, Rita. And everybody else, we hope to, uh, to see you back here next week for another great hour of music and community and uh, all that's right in the world so until then cheers everybody cheers. and cheers. we uh we'll see you next week on the back catalog listening party